Grass clippings are simply amazing with how they can add nutrients into the soil, to the plants, make them available to the plants, how they can transform the soil microbiome and make it much more alive. And overall, it just really boosts the health of any garden. And the cool thing is, especially in this modern life for many of us today, grass is an abundant resource, right? So many people uh, spend time mowing lawns and what we can do is we can really tap into this resource. Grass clippings can be a great source of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and iron. And they can also create an environment with a more stable temperature and humidity within the soil, helping to protect it from the elements and the rays of the sun. And it can really help transform and really enhance the properties of garden soil within that same growing season. So to illustrate this difference today, we're going to take a look at some squash plants. Some of them have had grass clippings added to them, while others have not. And we're gonna go check out and see what kind of differences there are. And hopefully you will, at the end of this video, you will be inspired to go out there and collect your own grass clippings and add them to your garden. You will see great results. So let's go check out these two different areas and compare and contrast what's going on. And these guys overall do not look quite as nearly as green as they could. Um, also, we have a lot more yellowing, right? A lot more chlorotic leaves and uh, some interesting spots. Oh, that's uh, uh, bl dried blossoms that have fallen off actually from the bed straw. Um, it's just creating those brown little dots on there. That's not like an actual insect or anything. But yeah, you can kind of see these plants look a little bit more anemic. A lot of male flowers and not a lot of female flowers. I've only gotten like three squash off of these uh, plants this season. Yeah, really light, light green. Uh, and you'll notice I, I uh, don't have any grass clippings down here at all. And the soil's kind of dried out a little bit, right? Uh, maybe you can see it. Yeah, there you go. And uh, even though I did um, shortly around the planting time, I did add some a little bit of compost to uh, some of these plants um, and help them help them grow for a little bit. But then the plants started like showing signs of ill health with yellowing leaves and not really growing that large, not really producing a bunch of female flowers or fruit ultimately. So really kind of unstable soil biology probably. Right, those nutrients that were in the soil may not have been consistently available. Here, of course, are some squash bug eggs. So here's another squash plant. Again, we've got two rows of beans here, uh, some sorghum. Uh, that's a squash, another row of beans, and so uh, you can see the squash leaves are yellowing here as well. Um, no grass clippings were added here. The plant's not really producing many flowers either or fruit, it's possible that the plant is deficient in a variety of nutrients, right, and not quite having the soil biology to back it up, but also specifically iron sometimes uh, can be one of the first nutrients to be bound up in soil and not easily available to plants. And that's of course because iron is um, extremely susceptible to oxidation, right? Oxidized iron is basically rust and plants can take in this form of iron, right? The rust, as we might say it, uh, but it's not really usable to the plant. And so to make that iron usable, it has to be in a different form, right? It's gotta be chelated to organic acids or things like that in the soil structure so that plants can pick it up and use it in its reduced form. 
And so grass clippings can help to um, increase the life in the soil, right? The production, right? The growth in the habitat for these um, microbes, right? That can start producing these acids that can then bind to and reduce some of these uh, nutrients and make them more available to the plants via the root structures and rootlets, root hairs, and whatnot. So here we have a bed of some patty pan squash and also some black turtle beans on either side. You can kind of see I have one row. Of, you can see I have one row of black turtle beans on that side, two rows here, and then a row of patty pan squash in the middle. And I transplanted these actually because I accidentally overseeded the original planting spot of the patty pan squash and I had a lot more germination than what I was expecting so I ended up planting these patty pan squash uh, in this area to help kind of thin out and these have actually grown really well they have really nice dark green leaves um, they look really healthy overall and they're starting to go into flower a lot of male flowers right now. Hopefully the female flowers will start showing up as well. The female flowers, of course, are the ones that have uh, the fruit. But you can also see that I have some grass clippings down in here. Just a, a nice mat of grass clippings. And I added them down a couple of weeks ago, back when they were dark green and everything and they still had all that nitrogen. And um, even if you even if you dig down a little bit, uh, look at on the under underside of the leaves, uh, those um, you can see that's still kind of green, right? That grass there that hasn't been exposed to the sun and whatnot, so and the air quite as much. So um, that still contains some nitrogen right that green color is the chlorophyll which is a pigmented protein and at the heart of every chlorophyll molecule at the center of it is one magnesium surrounded by four nitrogens so that's where that's how grass clippings can be such a great source of nitrogen which is healthy uh, which is and important for plants to be able to grow nice big green leaves um, and then of course also iron, potassium, and phosphorus can also be relatively high in grass clippings. Now the grass clippings can also help create an environment that can uh, have more of a stable temperature and humidity that is conducive to more microbial growth and vigor in the soil, right? And that can make nutrients more available, uh, nutrients such as iron and um, calcium and other uh, others as well and those can be more bioavailable to the plants but yeah these guys look pretty good 